Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Shar Weekly. Now this will come to you as a surprise because I am recommending and in my experience I'm saying is that MVVM is not a good choice for creating SUFUI applications. And the reason that it will be very surprising to you is that because I have been the biggest advocate of MVVM. I mean, I wrote a book on it and I created a lot of courses on it. And also I wrote a lot of articles on it. So why is it that MVVM is not a good choice? Well, after working with Sufi since 2019 and working on a lot of different apps, I always felt like that when I'm using MVVM to implement SwiftUI and adding a view model in between the model and the view, it always comes up with some weird issues. Let's go ahead and take a look at those issues. Now, I have already compiled it in an article, so you can definitely go and read the article on my website, which is azamsharp.com. Let's begin. The first thing is that React and Flutter. When we look at React and Flutter frameworks, uh, React is actually much more mature than Flutter, but both of them are released before Swift UI. And they're both extremely similar to Swift UI framework. They're both declarative framework. If you look at the React framework and you will find out that in React, they don't actually use the MVVM design pattern. I mean, they can, obviously, they can just include it, but that's not the flow of the app in most React applications. Most of the time, they will use Redux and they will provide a unidirectional flow from kind of like top to bottom. And the same can be said about Flutter, although they can use, you know, a provider, block, or even Redux. So even when you look at frameworks like React and Flutter, which are extremely similar, to SwiftUI, they're not using MVVM. They're not creating another model to sit in between the view and the actual model. Now, in SwiftUI, view becomes the view model. And the reason is that in SwiftUI, we have those properties called state and binding. So if you go back to far away, basically like 12, 15 years ago, uh, Microsoft released something called WPF, like Windows Presentation Foundation, which uses XAML to create application. So XAML was mostly for the user interface. And if you want to bind those values, you have to create a view model. But in this case, the view uh, in our Swift UI is a struct, and that is also acting like a view model because of the state and binding property wrappers. So we don't really need to add another layer of view model to do anything. Now, one of the things that which I have been doing in the view model, or I, have, I was doing, is I would use my view model to validate the UI. Like, hey, did you enter the password? Did you enter this? Did, or is, are these two things matching? All of those things can be moved into the view itself. Now, if you have complicated rules and UI management, then you probably might not need to create like a validation engine. But in most scenarios, you can simply use your view. Now let's talk about layers because I think this is a very important topic as, hey, we're adding a view model because we need to put something between the communication between the view and the model. And we always say, hey, model is our business logic. It depends. If your application is a client server application, kind of like this, then model is not the business logic the business logic resides on the server. The server is simply returning you an array of JSON or some sort of a JSON result, which is known as a model, a client model, or a better term will be a DTO, data transfer objects. And the job of the view is to simply display that particular data model. Now, what we do is we actually pass the data model DTO to the view model and the view model communicates and display it on the screen. But what if we just remove this? What if we remove the view model and now the DTO or whatever is being returned from the server can be directly given to the UI and it will be printed on the screen. That's how React does it. I mean, if you look at the, any of the React architectures, 
That is exactly what they're doing. They're not creating another layer of view model. They're taking the actual uh, model or the DTO. I would, I would not call this, I would not call this a domain model. Domain model in a client server usually lives on the server. All right. So in that scenario, we can just take the DTO and we can just put it on the view. We don't really have to create another layer of view model, which is really not doing anything. I mean, the DTO that you get from the server in a term of JSON, which is mapped to an object, that does not really have any logic, right? I mean, it's a struct and it just has some properties which are matching the JSON schema. And that can directly be given to the view without passing through the view model. And this is example of the same thing. I'm showing you that how you can do those things with a view model, but then removing all of that stuff. And now we can have a web service which perform the request and the web service is directly called from the content view. Now, one of the biggest problems that at least I faced is when working with global state, meaning single source of truth, one place where things get changed and then it trickles down to all the different views. If you're using the MVVM design pattern or MVVM pattern or architecture, whatever, whatever you want to call it, then it becomes a little bit hard. I mean, you have to create the view model, you have to add a dependency, meaning you need to pass in the global app state, and then you will have to inject the global app state to the view model as well as the environment object, because maybe there are some views who are not changing the global object, but they're only getting the values out of it, all right? So it becomes kind of hard. Now, if we don't use the view model, well, we simply create a counter service or counter whatever manager, and then we inject the whole counter service as an environment object, and then we just use it. No more passing dependencies to the view model, much simpler. All right. The same concept goes over here. If you ha are using the single source of truth, which is extremely important, uh, you should definitely check out the data flow for your UI application, data flow through UI uh, to Swift UI talk in 2019, in which they talk about single source of truth. Because sooner or later, you will need single source of truth. You will need some sort of a global state which can be shared among a multiple components, multiple views. And one way that you can do that without using a view model is create a web service, inject the web service into as an environment object, and then start using the web service. That's pretty much it. The single source of truth in this case is the actual web service. Now, in this situation, when you're using the global objects or the environment objects, one of the biggest complaints that you have is, hey, what happens uh, if I'm using environment object in my view and that changes and that will cause re-rendering of 100 views. Yeah, it will, uh, but uh, you can slice them up. I mean, over here, I'm giving you an example of the counter service, which is only updating the counter. And now I can add multiple environment objects. One is representing web service is going to be interested in only updating the products. And the counter service is only interested in updating the counter. All right. Going back to the business logic, as I mentioned earlier, business logic resides on the server in a client server application. But if your application is not client server, it's just client only, then where would you put business logic? And this is a very important question. Should you put your business logic in the actual model and then render the model to the view? That can be one approach or you can also add another layer of it, which is called the domain layer or the domain service, and that can have all the models. This does become a little bit uh, complicated if you don't have a client server model. But I think if you read the our Apple documentation and all that, they don't really add that particular layer, which acts like a, well, I guess in this case, it doesn't act like a view model. It acts like a domain, like a local domain service which runs all your logical operations on the model if you want to keep the model very, very nice and lean. If you want, you can actually add business logic to your model, but then keep in mind that you will be giving that particular domain object to the view. So 
uh, is a benefit. I mean, there are advantages and disadvantages of either approaches. Um, so you have to think about that a little bit more. Now, one of the things that I've found is when I'm working with MVVM design pattern and core data is I was not interested in using the property wrappers for fetch requests and section fetch requests because now we're pulling these objects from core data and just putting it on the screen. And you might say that, well, this you're putting domain logic on the screen, business objects. Well, these are not really business objects. I mean, the fetch result or the objects that are stored in the database, they are not business domain layer objects. They are just data mapping or data model objects. So they don't really have any logic in them unless you put them there. Uh, but by default, they don't really have any logic in them. All right, that's just the representation of the data. All right, so one of the things I notice when I'm using core data with MVVM is that once I add a new record in the database, then um, the screen will not update. All right, in order to update the screen, I have to call the function to get the records again, kind of like imperative programming instead of a reactive programming. Or instead of using fetch request, I would implement NS fetch results controller right within my view model. And that's a lot of code to, to do that. I mean, I could have just used one line and used the fetch request and got all the stuff that I wanted. But if you're using the MVVM design pattern, you might end up using NS fetch results controller into your view model so that when the new item is added into the database, uh, the core data will perform a fetch automatically and, uh, you know, and then eventually set some sort of a published property, which will later update. If you want to check out that particular NS fetch results controller in the MVVM, check out this video. And if you want to check out the alternate way, which is using SwiftUI, is check out this particular video, implementing fetch requests in SwiftUI. Now, I was working with some Realm sponsored videos, which you may have seen on my YouTube channel. And Realm has also created a lot of nice property wrappers, which makes your life very, very easy. And you can use these property wrappers right inside your view and perform all sorts of different operations. So if I was using MVVM, then I would not be able to use all of those nice property wrappers. So that's another limitation. What about unit testing? Well, if you're using MVVM design pattern, MVVM architecture, whatever you want to call it, uh, to build your CFUI applications, you're not really going to be writing any unit tests for the view model anyways, right? I mean, there's no logic in there, hopefully, right? There's no business rules in your view model, are there? Well, if there are business rules in your view model, mm, that's not really a view model. That's becoming more like a domain logic, domain model, all right? So whenever you're writing your unit tests, make sure that your domain layer is the one that is tested. That's the heart of your application. Now, if you're working in a client-server application, most probably this domain layer will exist on your server, depending on the server. You might have used Vapor, you might have used Django using Python or ASP.NET or Node like me. Uh, that domain layer will exist on a server. So you have to make sure that that domain layer is tested thoroughly. Uh, next, you will create your UI test, which is just easy to create in SwiftUI, and integration test to see everything works. So removing view model doesn't really make that much of a dif difference because you didn't really create any view model to begin with, or you never really tested the view model to begin with. What about Redux? Is that the good way to go? Now, Redux is a very interesting architecture um, and the React actually uses Redux a lot. So if you look at the React applications, you will find a lot of applications are using Redux for uh, kind of like a unidirectional flow. I believe that the Redux is already implemented in our application. It's uh, through the use of environment object. Yes, there are no reducers, uh, so you can update your environment object from anywhere. And I guess that is the main reason that you will implement Redux if you want to uh, for your SwiftUI applications. 
but you don't really have to go through the complexity of uh, Redux. Uh, I think if you just manage your environment object carefully, uh, then you should be able to proceed with single source of truth. So all of this stuff about MVVM and how it is not a good idea to use MVVM in a CIFIO application. So which architecture pattern should you use? Redux or the composable architecture? I would say that the name of the architecture that Apple, I don't know the name actually, I mean the, the, the architecture that Apple is using, you should use that. So basically the architecture Apple is using is that you get a model DTO, I'm going to write DTO over here, that's not the domain model, that's just the stuff you get from the JSON and you put it directly on the view. That's the architecture. So you can say instead of MVVM, it kind of is like MV, all right? Um, there are a lot of different resources, you can definitely check it out. Especially try to check out this one, retrieving content from the server. This is actually from Apple and they show you how you can retrieve content from the server and put it on the screen without using NVVM or anything. They just literally put it in the environment variable and then put it on the screen. And that's the architecture you should be using. I don't think this architecture has any name or anything. Uh, you can call it MV architecture or something like that. But from my understanding is that whenever I will, or my experience is that whenever I was using NVVM architecture with creating these Swift UI applications, I always ended up with like a lot of pain, meaning I was fighting the framework and that is something that you should be avoiding. All right, so yeah, definitely read this particular, uh, you know, or watch this or read this particular article and check out all the code that uh, Apple has written. I mean, Apple has never said that, oh, you have to use MVVM and all that stuff for view model. They just made it very simple because the reason is that if you start using MVVM, then you start losing a lot of really cool things that are provided by the Swift UI framework, including the environment object because you can't really use environment object inside the view model. So you have to pass it as a dependency and that becomes very painful. All right, so just try to use the framework as it is supposed to be. And I am one of those people who uh, actually advocated with the idea of the view model, right? I mean, uh, and now I'm creating more and more apps and I'm trying to, and I find out that I'm always trying, it's, it's always like hitting a wall. Oh, I need to pass this information over here. Oh, I have a view model, but that needs to update the global state. Oh, how should I do that? I have to now, pass the global state into something else. So it definitely becomes hard. If you keep fighting the framework, it will become harder and harder. All right, so check out the videos by Apple. Uh, I don't have a recommended architecture name for you and use how Apple is using their Surf UI framework. Don't try to get fancy by adding Surf, as adding NVVM and all that stuff. It just uh, adds more pain to your uh, to your project, and uh, hopefully you'll find this useful. Thank you so much, and enjoy.